Sometimes we may wonder or have a reason to uh, need to theorize about the structure of an intermediate. We may want to come up with an idea of what an intermediate might look like. And when that is the case, when we're trying to determine the structure of an intermediate, we are going to use a tool to help us that is called the Hammond postulate. So to illustrate the Hammond postulate, we're going to draw two energy diagrams. So these are going to be energy of a chemical reaction versus time. And one of these reactions is going to be an exothermic reaction, and the other one is going to be an endothermic reaction. And let's say that the, the reaction that we're studying is this reaction right here. So we're going to take bromomethane, and we are going to react it with a hydroxide ion. And then we are going to make this molecule, which you haven't learned how to name yet, that is called methanol. That is a hydrogen up here. It's kind of squished up like that. And the other product of this reaction is some bromide. So let's say that we were studying this chemical reaction right here, and we did not know if it was exothermic or endothermic, so we weren't sure which one of these energy diagrams was accurate for this particular reaction. So we do know that the reactant for each of these reactions, the key reactant here, is going to be the bromomethane. So I'm going to sketch that structure um, into the empty space here on the energy diagram. So we have that as a reference. That's kind of a goofy looking bond angle, but I ran out of room. And then I'm also going to draw our product into the space on the diagram, just to give us a reminder of what what our product looks like. Now, for these two diagrams, it's important that for me to just kind of side note, say that the energy of any given molecule is the same, no matter what kind of situation it might be in. So when we've drawn these two diagrams side by side, and the way that I've drawn these two diagrams, it kind of looks like this bromomethane is lower, is higher in energy, like they have different energies. And that wouldn't be possible. That would be impossible. So these two graphs would have to have different energy scale associated with them. Like maybe this is 10 kilojoules, which means this has to be 10 kilojoules as well. Um, just felt compelled to say that. So here are the two reactions. Maybe it's exothermic, maybe it's endothermic. Either way, we're starting with the same reactants and we're ending with the same products. And let's say that we were motivated to try to come up with an idea or a theory of what the transition state might look like for these two reactions. So to use that or to do that, we're going to use the Hammond postulate, which tells us, and this is kind of a mouthful at first, the structure of a transition state most closely resembles so that means it looks the most like the reactant or product or if this was a multi-step reaction, could be intermediate, the reactant or product or intermediate that is closest in energy to the transition state. And one of the caveats of this is that it can't just be the thing that is closest in energy, but it also has to be either immediately to the left or the right of the intermediate, or excuse me, the transition state. So it must be immediately to the left or the right of the transition state. Now, I'll show you what that means in another example um, 
just to make sure that that's clear. But we're going to start with just the first half of this. So it most closely resembles the reactant or the product or the intermediate that it's closest in energy to. So if we're going to focus on this graph first, and we're looking at this transition state right here, remember the transition state is a molecule that is formed in the exact instant that bonds are being broken and bonds are being formed. So for this particular molecule, for this particular reaction, the transition state is going to kind of look like this. It is the moment that the carbon bromine bond is breaking and the carbon oxygen bond is forming. And if we want to get an idea of exactly what this molecule looks like in terms of bond length, bond uh, angles, things like that, the structure is going to most closely resemble the structure of the thing to the left or the right that is closest in energy. So in terms of energy, our transition state is closer in energy to our reactant than it is to our product, which means that the carbon bromine bond is pretty normal in terms of its length. And that carbon oxygen bond that's being formed is going to be the one that is weird. Like it's going to be super long as I've drawn it here. Um, that's usually how we choose to represent this. It's just a very unusual bond length. So for uh, this graph over here, where we have, again, we have a, a desire to understand what that particular transition state looks like. And again, it's going to be transition state where we are breaking the bond to the bromine and forming the bond to the oxygen. And this time, what does that transition state look like? Well, the thing that is closest in energy to the transition state now is our product. The reactant is further away in energy. So what does that mean? That means that the bond to the oxygen is pretty normal and the carbon bromine bond is going to be the one that is super weird. So these would be um, sketches of a good theory of what the transition state would look like for this particular reaction. Let's take a look at um, the second part of the Hammond postulate. It must be immediately to the left or the right of the transition state. So what I'm going to do is back up to a multi-step diagram or multi-step reaction. If we wanted to theorize what the structure of this transition state was, again, we're looking for the reactant product or intermediate that's closest in energy. However, we can only look to the immediate left and the immediate right. So for this particular transition state, it's either going to resemble this guy or this guy. It's not possible for it to resemble something that is further down the line in the chemical reaction. So this transition state would most closely resemble the structure of this intermediate because it's closer in energy and immediately to the right. This transition state is only able to resemble either the intermediate to the left or the intermediate to the right, one or the other. This intermediate is closest in energy, so this transition state would also resemble this particular intermediate, and that's valid. It's uh, two different transition states can resemble the same intermediate. And then for this inter transition state right here, it would only be able to resemble that intermediate or that product immediately to the left or immediately to the right. The intermediate is closer in energy, so this transition state would rep uh, resemble this intermediate right here.